This is my, uh, well, this is my light with food. It's about when a potato can light up an LED light. I thought it could, my hypothesis was that it, it, it wasn't gonna work because I didn't think a potato could light up. I didn't know all the potatoes could light it up. Uh, and my results was that potatoes ended up lasting for over a few days. For materials, I needed a potato, six wires, a coin, five, five nails, and an LED light. My problem statement is which potato could light up an LED light longer? A potato, a lemon, or a grapefruit? and it ended up being the potato. My research I found was citric acid and lemon was 4%. And then there's other citric acid in other fruits like grapefruit, lemon, limes, tangos, and so on. My conclusions was that all the, none, all the fruits, fruits lighted up except for the grapefruit. Next time I Choose, I would choose to use more potatoes or grapefruit. This is our slime bending machine. Some constraints that we had were that some of the materials were going to be harder to get. Like there is a clay that's hard to get called Daiso clay. There's also um, some other things like foam beads. You probably have to order them online. Um, another constraint was that we needed to make sure that the buttons would work on the machine so you could turn it and like slime would actually come out. Um, how we discovered the problem was that we both enjoyed slime and that um, we thought that uh, that would be a great idea if there was a vending machine for slime because sometimes you're not able to get the materials that you could or that you need so if there's a slime vending machine you could just get them and then make the slime that you want. We chose to make a slime vending machine because we know, um, me and her, we both enjoy slime and we know that sometimes you can't get the certain materials and slime that you like. So if there's a slime vending machine, they'd already come pre-made, so then you could just have your slime. Well, I lose my this project, we thought really hard and we had an idea of the slime vending machine. Um, and we thought of having it two sides because it would be easier to manage from the back because from the back of the machine, you can, uh, you, the back opens and you can manage both of them. And there's like a split down the middle in the back. And you can work with both of them instead of having a different type. When, in our progress of building a prototype, we found all of our information. Then we gathered all of the materials. We built the prototype and our real design and product worked. Next we tested it to make sure that it did work. Then we colored the machine to make it like more bold and pretty. And we um, added like the buttons and like the food coloring and extra little things on it. And then we finished it up and brought it to school for adventure school. Um, so our plan was at first that for the machine, um, that the, if you see this part, this part would be on top of it. But we thought maybe that would just be too tall or any, any kind of that. So then we decided that we'd change it up and we had it side to side, as I said, that we could manage it from the back on both sides. And we thought it would just look nicer from the front. And we, for our prototype, um, it was uh, bigger. And we decided that um, it would be uh, way better to have it a little smaller because it was actually really big. So uh, then we changed it to be. On this side, we just <coughs> put in some pictures of slime and to show you, give you an idea of some of the slime that could possibly be in the machine. Um, improvements were our redesign. So the changes we had made to the design were the appearance of the machine. Um, so at first, we didn't have like all this cool writing on it. Uh, and no, it wasn't colored. So we had. Uh, change the colors and yeah. Uh, um, testing and evaluating. At first, we didn't know very well what we were gonna do. We had some ideas like thrown around, but none of them really like fit. And then 
then we came up with an idea of like a button to spin, so you're just like, lock down on the bottom. So things that were good and bad about our first design were our first design was too big and it didn't really spin in the, in the buttons. As you can see, they're like sitting perfectly in the machine, but um, in our first design, they kind of like would flop around. One good thing about our machine is that the things we wanted to work on were perfectly fine and they weren't good or bad. Um, something it was, it was very hard to cut out. Like, a lot of times it's because we at first tried to use like scissors and punch it. So I ended up using like box knives and a test knife to get it off. So our research was we went to www.candymachines.com but um, and we went to eBay and uh, www.globalvendingmachinegroup.com and what we did was we were searching like how much a vending machine um, would be and our highest price was around like $5,000 that we had found and um, and when we were researching uh, we found that like there were, some, there were a lot of different kinds of them and if you want to see how the machine moves, you just spin it up. It's kind of more of a visual reminder than a, uh, there's white side of the material. And it turns out that's this, and you have a cute label on it. And what you can do is you can color this one, and put beads in it if you want it, and you could make your own fun. There's also a clear sign. And then if you turn this one, this one says fun vending machine because that one is make your own. And what we have in there now is a green apple slime and it has some green beads in it. And it smells like apples. <laughs> my name is Tucker Games and my and my board about dog food lovers and my question is which dog food does my dog love? My hypothesis is my dog will eat blue buffalo dog food more than pedigree. My experiment supplies is blue buffalo dog food, beef flavored, and pedigree dog food, beef flavored, measuring cup, and uh, container for the dog food. My procedure is, well, my first procedure is start by measuring out one brand of pedigree dog food and feed it to my dog Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and record how much she ate. My second procedure is measure out one cup of blue buffalo dog food and feed it to my dog Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and then learn my results how much she ate. My variable my locally variables is different brands of dog food. My responding variable is amount of food she ate and cups. My control variable is measurement of dog food the same time of day, same flavor and food of food. My results is oh wait. My data is she ate all the blue buffalo dog food and all the trials. She ate none of the pedigree. My my result is she ate all of the blue buffalo and not the pedigree. Conclusion is my hypothesis was correct. Dog my dog like the blue buffalo food best. My application from now on since my dog like blue buffalo bus, I will feed her blue buffalo dog food. My Inventor's Fair project, I created the stick clip. The stick clip is a device that will clip on your pants to help you not lose your chapstick. It also acts as a pocket in case you don't have any pockets on your pants and you're carrying around your chapstick everywhere. You can just clip this onto the waistband of your pants so you don't have to deal with it. Uh, I'll, you might be thinking, like, how did I come up with this idea? Uh, I thought of this because my parents, they lectured me a lot of times for losing my chapstick all the time. So when the Adventures Fair came up, I thought this would be a great time to think of uh, a design and prototype that would help me fix this problem. Uh, in the beginning stage of this, you have to ask yourself what are your needs and what are your constraints. 
the general constraints of mine are like the price of my of everything. I want it to be low price. I don't have to do stuff like per repurpose a lot of items, stuff like that. Uh, materials, obviously, what I can use, uh, and I wanted it to be machine washable and dryable, uh, and then time how long I had to do this project. The product constraints that just mainly do with how the product is is I wanted it to be durable because you don't want something uh, that bugs you all the time and it does the right uh, it does the right. Uh, problem, like it fixes what you want it to do. You want it to be resilient because you don't want it to break all the time when you're using it. Uh, you want it to be comfortable so that it doesn't annoy you while it's clipped onto you. And then you want it to be stylish because you don't want to go out and have a clip onto you that looks really weird. Um, in the imagine step, which is the next one, you have to develop some possible solutions, uh, how you want the design to look, stuff like that. And the first, uh, my first ideas were like a keychain form, because at school we have to wear IDs, and I thought that you could just clip it onto your ID, and maybe that'd look good. Uh, a fabric holder, like a kind of like an extra pocket on your pants, that just this is just designed for chapstick, but that'd be more of like a clothing part that like that they sell at stores. Uh, and then a design clip that would form to anyone's type of pants. That's kind of what I did. Uh, the next step would be research, which is like seeing what other items are out there to compare it to what your ideas are. Uh, when I researched, I went to three different websites. The websites were parenting.com, uh, Google Patents, and uh, Pinterest.com. On Google uh, Patents, I found a design that was almost exactly what uh, as I later made. It was a clothespin clip with a uh, little <coughs> with a little holder that clipped onto your pants. So it's almost exactly what I did. Uh, Pinterest.com had exactly what I thought in my imagine develop possible uh, solutions, which was a keychain form that clipped onto your ID. So I found the exact same thing on Parenting.com too, but when I saw it on Pinterest, they had more of a designed area so that it looked better on different people. Uh, the next stage is planning, and uh, in my plan, I had to I had five steps that I had to go through. Uh, the first step would be diagram, make a sketch of what your uh, idea is, and I actually have that sketch right here where I kind of drew a picture of someone's pants and then the clip clipped onto the pants. You got to gather ma your materials, obviously, so you can set everything up to get an idea of what, how stuff is going to be planned out. You got to construct your prototype, which leads me into create. Uh, then you got to test it and test and evaluate, and then you got to record your data. Uh, in the create, I had to find a uh, sturdy binder clip because, I mean, there's actually some off-brand binder clips if you wouldn't believe it. Uh, you got to find a material that could stick to the chapstick, which ended up being Velcro. And you also have to, uh, you got to apply the Velcro and you got to get everything set up and then you're good. Uh, for test and evaluate, uh, I tested my prototype for four different days. I tested two days on and two days off to see that if there's any difference. Uh, the first two days I tested it with it and uh, it didn't fall off at all. It stayed on and exa did exactly what I wanted it to. The next two days I did it without it and I wore swishy pants. The first day it fell out and I lost it right away. And the second day, it just kept on falling out, but I did not lose it. So there was a dramatic difference in uh, uh, testing. The pros of testing is uh, I saw it was like, durable, exactly what I wanted in my uh, asking. Uh, it was small, so it didn't bug me, which kind of helps on the uh, comfortableness. It was a it it wasn't it was a great visual reminder to know not to put it in the washer or dryer because you never want to do that. Uh, the Velcro was super strong, it didn't fall off at all. Uh, the chapstick uh, stayed with me until I used it all up. It's empty now, actually. And uh, I got no more chap lips. The cons was it could not handle very intense pressure. Like if you uh, were messing with it a lot, the chapstick would fall off, which I would like to try to find a better material to stick it on at one point. Uh, it was easily stolen because you could just take it off anytime you want. And uh, it had a lack of style. So uh, that actually leads me into my improve and redesign. I wanted to change the style. So I made one big change to my design and I decorated it. But I realized that in every single material I used to decorate it <coughs> <coughs> seemed to not work. It just seemed to rub off, like marker and paint. It just rubbed off because it's metal. So I wanted to find a different material that you could finally use to design. And then feature considerations. If I were to do it again, I wanted to create multiple different designs, like the uh, keychain form I thought of, the fabric holder, to see which one had a better effect. Because uh, I want to know if this isn't, if this is or the best way to have chapstick clip. That's all. This is my um, science project. It's food for thought. Um, um, my story is I got my idea um, from when I eat breakfast. I always wondered if eating food helps you solve 
100 multiplication math problems faster and better. So that is why I decided to try and see. My question is, when you um, eat food, but, um, is it better for you when you are doing 100 math problems? Or is it better for you when you um, don't eat and you're solving 100 math problems? My hypothesis is I predict that um, when you eat food, it will help you because um, when, I, when you eat, you usually feel more awake. That's, why, that's my hypothesis. My research is children who don't eat at home or food, or home or school, or less able to learn. One study found that fifth graders who do not um, eat food were less, uh, don't learn as fast. Evidence suggests that um, food really does help kids learn. My procedure was um, one, grab supplies, two, set timer for three minutes, three, grab math sheets and pencil, four, start timer and start solving problems, five, correct problems, six, make food, seven, eat the food, um, eight, restart the timer, nine, grab new math sheets and the pencil, um, 10 was start timer and solve the problems, and correct the problems was step 11. 12 is write down observations. My materials were um, two packages of ramen noodles, four cups of water, one pencil, one timer, and 100 fact multiplication sheet. My, um, my table shows that my eating trial one got one wrong, eating trial two got three wrong, and eating trial three got two wrong, and my average was two wrong. My trial for not eating, first trial was nine wrong, second trial six wrong, third trial seven wrong, and se um, my average was 7.1 wrong. But in conclusion, my hypothesis was correct because eating food had less problems than correct. Um, my controlled variable was um, eating 100 math multiplication problems. My independent variable was when you eat and you do not eat, and my dependent variable was when you do so when you do eat, you do solve 100 multiplication math problems faster, or when you don't eat breakfast.